Hello everyone, this is Mitch, and welcome to the building part of episode 4 of my Kerbal Space Let's Play series. So, this is actually before we are going to um, start building the rocket to go to the moon surface. Why to the moon surface? Well, because we have the contract for it. Um, the contract to orbit the moon is probably going to be done between episodes, but this is likely to unlock the landing contract, which is going to follow immediately afterwards. Uh, the reason being, I want the next um, Let's Play mission to be a landing on the moon, but in order to do this, I want to pick up a few more technologies, namely this for the small inline reaction wheel, but this is only a stepping stone to the landing struts, which are going to help us a lot. I could probably make do with the micro landing struts, but hey, it's not going to require a lot of science to get us there. We already have 157. I could buy these two already. But I also want uh, this one to have the basic solar panels, which is an extra 90, uh, 90 points of science. It's going to get us the first useful probe core, if I can say so, um, because this one has no stability assist. This one does. So I'm going to do this, but I wanted to show you because before I'm going to do this, yeah, we went for an encounter of the moon without any upgrades to the Kerbal Space Center, but for a landing mission and future missions, I am actually going to upgrade the Space Center, um, most of it anyway, to the level 2. So we are going to go in and upgrade the launch pad. We are going to upgrade the tracking station. Mission control for flight planning. The vehicle assembly building to get more parts to play with. Why not the astronaut complex? so we can perform EVAs and plant flags. And finally, the R&D center, so we can collect surface samples. And there we go, I think that's going to be it. Um, also, if you're going to hire Kerbals, I suggest you do it before you start rescuing more because whether you acquire new astronauts using uh, rescue missions or the hiring mechanism, the price is going to go up. The more astronauts you have, the more costly it is. And when you do rescue missions, you don't get to pick the profession of your Kerbals. So we start with two pilots, which is okay. One engineer and one scientist. We'll want more, and because I don't want to mess around for this Let's Play and we have a lot of money on end, I'm going to go right ahead and pick a few more crew. In this case, we have a very courageous uh, Kerbal girl who is not stupid and is a pilot. Now, these things do absolutely nothing, whether she's courageous or stupid. It's just my tendency to pick my Kerbals like that. We have Don Rig, who is very courageous and both stupid, which is excellent trait for a scientist. There we go, Don Rig. I'd like another scientist who is... I don't know. Let's get a guy... Are there any guy scientists here? I don't think so. Nope. So I guess it's going to be a girl. Um, Haya is neither very courageous nor stupid, Alf is a bit stupid and not courageous, and Russell is both. Perfect. And I'm going to want maybe one or two extra engineers as well. Oh, Bargy is perfect. And one more, maybe Kirtzen. And that's it. So I'm going to do a few missions, train a few other uh, Kerbals, at least to level 1 for future missions, and I'm going to prepare the next moon mission. So see you in a flash for you, and in maybe days for me. And I'm back. 
So it has indeed been several days, and it's been exactly two missions since the previous part of the video, so I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So previously, uh, during the flyby video, we completed this contract to perform a flyby, gather scientific data, and return from the flyby. I've also completed this one to go on an orbital spacewalk near the Moon, and this one to orbit the Moon, uh, in the hopes of getting the other uh, Kerbin World First Record Keeping Society's contract to land on the moon, but I couldn't get it. So I also did this one, Science Data from Space Around Kerbin, really easy, uh, even if you go with just a thermometer and it has zero science, you can transmit it or land it and it still counts. It's just a report, a science report from Space Around Kerbin. So easy money. So what I did is pick up these contracts, one which is Explore Kerbin, sadly. Um, there's only one Kerbin World First Record Keeping Society contract active at one time normally. I wish that was the uh, Land on the Moon, but it isn't. It's a rendezvous two vessels in orbit of Kerbin, which segues into this contract, which is to rescue Luzon Kerbin from orbit of Kerbin, stranded in low Kerbin orbit, so this is how you can get extra carbonauts. So in order to complete this contract, I'm going to need to complete this one because I'm going to need to rendezvous uh, two vessels in orbit in order to get Luzon from low Kerbin orbit. But I did manage to get this contract to plant a flag on the moon, on the moon, whatever which is uh, fairly lucrative, so we're going to stick to the original plan and the rescue is going to be for next video. So that's it for the contracts. So using the science I've got from the previous two missions that I've done between episodes, I did indeed unlock this node and this node for the landing struts, mostly. The small inline reaction wheel is very useful as well. I unlocked electrics, which gives me a solar panel and the first useful probe core, a better battery, some lights, and a thermal control system, which is not going to be useful at this time, but still. And I've unlocked general construction, which gives us uh, the Mark I crew cabin, uh, which has a crew capacity of two, which we might use on our lander, because I'd really like to bring a scientist and struts which are useful, adapters, decouplers, structural fuselage, and the launch clamps basically. So all useful stuff. So let's go right in and design a moon lander. So according to my calculations uh, using the Delta V map, it takes uh, 860 units of Delta V or meters per second to uh, get an encounter with the Moon, and then it takes another 310 to get into orbit, and then almost 600 to land and to take off. So that all adds up to a little over 2,500 delta V. I think it's 2,640 meters per second uh, total for the top stage to uh, go from low carbon orbit to landing and returning from the Moon. Uh, I'm going to aim for closer to uh, 3,000 meters per second of delta V, just because I want to be safe and maybe we can hop on the Moon's surface to another biome to get a bit more science using that extra fuel if we have any to spare. So right now the debate is whether or not I should use a probe core and the capsule to just land a single scientist. That would probably be the lightest top stage I can come up with. However, if I make it with, where is it, uh, utility, if I build my last stage with a crew cabin, I could bring tourists in the future. You could too, to um, do tourist contracts on the surface of the Moon, which would be really nice. 
and I could also use that to bring you know more crew to train them basically so I could make this a training spaceship as well send Kerbonauts on the moon, gather experience, gather science and come back so I think we're gonna do that this is going to um, make our top stage a lot heavier however and it's a fairly long module as well and for landings you really want your center of mass to be as far low as possible as down low as possible to the surface so that using your landing legs you know if you can put them wide enough it will prevent um, tilting out of the vehicle even if you land in a bit of a slope because let's face it uh, finding a perfect landing location is really hard so having a wide base with landing legs and a center of mass that is low will help a lot with spinning or whatever slopes so I don't know about the crew cabin let's see if I want to bring a crew cabin then I can only bring one science junior and I'll also want one mystery goo at the very least thermometer, barometer I shouldn't need the experiment storage unit if I do this although it's useful because you can store two copies of the science junior for example because one copy of an experiment is not going to be enough to earn you full science so I could do one science junior and one storage unit and you can do this the experiment twice keep one copy in the command pod and one copy in the storage unit because you can't put two copies of the same experiment on the same a storage unit basically or pod or whatever you use to store the data although I think the crew cabin would work as well so yeah we could do that so how to get a wide base you could use 2.5 meter parts or you could do like I usually do and that is to build radially so for example I would go structural and do something like this three-way symmetry put fuel tanks on there and put landing engines something like that and let's just see for fun that's a lot of delta V like that's really a lot and now it's really wide and all I need to do is something like this for example I'm not sure that's perfectly in line no that's going to make me go crazy so something like this I might put it even lower to avoid knocking the engines on the ground and that's almost all you need to uh, go and land on the moon and come back that's in vacuum this is almost 3000 units of Delta V by itself which is good but it's also probably quite heavy and we have to not forget that we need to bring that into orbit before it works so I'm going to think about my design for a little bit and I'm gonna come back when I have uh, my idea for the lander alright so I'm back I have my idea so we are indeed going to bring three people on the moon and make a reusable moon lander so a command pod for a pilot and a crew cabin underneath um, for this one since it's a longer mission I'm going to put a small battery there on top a parachute a small set of drug parachutes on the capsule a bigger set of parachutes there because this is going to be somewhat heavy alright I might put the instrumentation the smaller ones on top of the capsule 
So thermometer, barometer. I'm going to bring a Kerbal Engineer thing here. Oops, was I in? Yes, I was in symmetry mode. I only need one thermometer and one barometer. So yeah, I'm going to put a Kerbal Engineer module here so we can get delta V readings from space. I'm going to hide it inside the capsule because it's very ugly and it's just a, like a chip. There we go. I'm going to make the crew cabin just like flush with the capsule. And this is what we're bringing back, basically what's going to land. So we're going to put a heat shield underneath. I'm going to move it closer to the edge. I don't need full ablator. I don't need the uh, ejection really either. I'm going to disable the shroud and just put the decoupler flush with it. Like so. So, all right. I'm going to stage the drogue shoots before the last pair of shoots. So we have the return stage here. Underneath that, I'm going to put Science Junior. And just like I had it before, I'm going to put three sticks or girders like that on the side of this thing here. I'm going to offset them just a little bit so it doesn't look so crazy. One this way, one this way. So it looks nicely attached. What does it look like if I open the doors? A little nuts, but not too bad. And I'm going to put a single or two mystery goos by the side of these things. Like that, roughly aligning the top with the girder. Okay. And I'm going to put these fuel tanks just as I had them. I'm going to try to line them up as nicely as I can. Oops, I needed three-way symmetry. Uh, it's not like crucial that you align them perfectly because even if they are a little offset, they are going to uh, be um, like, as long as you use symmetry, of course, if you put them one by one, it's going to be all wrong. But even if they're offset, if you put them in symmetry, they are going to be offset symmetrically. So it shouldn't affect uh, your craft's ability to um, steer or be stable. So there we go. Terrier engines, and as you can see right now, this is a lot of delta V. So that part should be fine. Uh, where are the nose cones? Because I don't have fairings large enough to uh, protect this from the atmosphere, so I need to make it at least a little bit aerodynamic. I'm also going to put small solar panels on the outside of these pods or whatever to get some electric charge back in case I need it. And why not for form, I'm going to put small antenna, just one near the top here. It's not needed, but using that antenna I can transmit, you know, like um, thermometer and barometer uh, data back to Kerbin. If the uh, pilot is outside, I can retain partial control. If there's a Kerbinaut in the common pod or whatever, you know, it's just it's just nice to have around. So this is the core of what we're going to send to the moon. Oh, let's not forget the landing legs. I'm going to offset these a little bit as well. And I'm going to put more just for stability. So I'm going to put one like that and one roughly 90 degrees from this one 
like that. I'm going to line it up with the engine's thing here as much as possible. There we go. So delta V is getting a little low. Let's see. My idea was this. If you right click the decoupler, I don't need this much force. If you right click the decoupler, you can enable cross feed. So what I'm going to do is actually put a large tank underneath here. And it's not going to show up. Actually, it is going to show up as long as I stage things properly. Uh, I'm going to use these engines for the transfer stage as well. But not, I'm not going to use this tank to land, but I'm going to use it to transfer to the MUN. So I won't have to use this fuel to get there. And it's supposed to be 860 meters per second of delta V to uh, get from low carbon orbit to the MUN, so this should be plenty. Sorry for that. So this is what we're taking away from Kerbin and to the Mun. Um, landing legs are not like symmetrical with the girders, so I'm going to change that a little bit. Oh, symmetry, never forget. Line it up the same way I lined the previous ones up with the engine. I think I put it back in the same place. Not quite. So one there like that. So now we have a very nice uh, base to land with. If I take this off, the center of mass is also quite low with these fuel tanks full. I can, you know, it's going to go up as I spend fuel, but it's going to be fine. So like this. So 3,300 meters per second of delta V, so that's plenty more than plenty actually to get us to the surface of the MUN and we have three seats we have the Science Junior, we have two Mystery Goose thermometer, this enough chutes to land us back a heat shield with some ablator we don't need the monopropylene from this one so this is the core of our vehicle and we're going to put another decoupler there and we are going to create an ascent stage to get us from the ground on Kerbin to low Kerbin orbit before transferring. Alright, so the top of this vehicle is very heavy. Right now we're sitting at 16 tons, roughly. So we are going to need a very heavy duty launch stage. So I'm going to do it like this. So that's a lot. I'm going to use the swivel because... Let's make this more compact. Let's move it. I could use a Reliant in the middle. And I'm really debating. But I think I'm going to use a swivel engine for the core here because it has an ISP of 320 in vacuum and this one has only 310 but I'm going to compensate that by using the thuds on the side of this one who have uh, the highest ISP at sea level of all the other engines so it has 275 this one is 265 and this one is 250 I'm going to put 4 there so let's make sure everything is staged properly. We want all five engines to fire at the same time. When we decouple that, we want these engines to fire so we can actually put them in the same stage. This is a useless stage. Before we land, we want to jettison the huge fuel tank from the bottom. And before we land, we want to jettison that. And we have all the parachutes. So far, so good. Right now we have a thrust to weight ratio that is perfectly high enough to lift us from the ground. Actually, it's so high, 
we could actually use fewer engines. Let's see. Do this like that. 1.04 at ground level, that's perfectly fine since I'm going to use even more boosters, but liquid fuel boosters this time. In fact, I don't think I used boosters in this series at all yet. So right now, stage 4 and 3 we don't want to touch on ascent. Besides, they have really poor thrust to weight ratios uh, in atmosphere. And we have only this much delta V for the bottom stage. However, let's see if 3 would be enough. We want to put the decouplers near the middle of this stack because they're probably going to be nearly as long as this. And since these things push against what they're decoupling, if you don't put them close enough to the middle, you're going to induce a rotation. And whatever you're decoupling might rotate and kick your rocket, like hit your rocket on the side and break parts. So you want to make sure your decouplers are roughly in the middle of where everything's going to be. And now let's see. If we go like this, now I'm probably going to use the Reliant here. I should have, oh yeah, and I'm going to lower the gimbal on this thing because these move move a lot. Height degrees of freedom is way too much. I'm going to cut this one in half as well. And let's see, how much thrust... Hold on here. We want everything to fire at the same time. So this lifts off. We're still quite a ways off from getting the required delta V to get into orbit, but there is one little trick we can do, and that is fuel ducts. Basically, we can do it like this. And the reason the delta V is going up by doing this is because we can fire all the engines and burn all the fuel on the side tanks and get rid of these tanks uh, when they're empty. But this middle stage will still be full. So that's a good trick to keep your thrust to weight ratio up without using the fuel from your center stage. So what happens if we do this? We are getting really, really close. I'd like a little bit more margin to make sure we are not going to have to use a fuel from the middle stage. So what we can do is turn on four-way symmetry and we can roughly align it with the other tank if we can see where the borders are. Let's try this. Now this is going to clip the engines and that's really not good. Let's put it diagonal. That's not perfectly aligned. What is wrong here? Are my tanks aligned? No, they're not. You can see they're strapped on to the side of the decoupler, so let's try to fix that. And now we're not touching the engine. Good. We can actually um, just offset them a little bit. I don't want to offset them too much because then they're going to clip the center engine and that's really not good either. Offset them down a little bit as well. So the exhaust from these thuds will not burn the nozzle from the swivel here. So right now with four boosters, yep, we should have plenty of delta V to get into orbit. The decoupler is roughly in the middle. It's a little, a little high. The fuel ducts don't look like they're put on correctly. So let's fix that. Good. 
So that's really looking good. That's looking like a uh, proper spaceship to go to the moon. We are going to offset everything a little bit as well further. So we have one, two, and three side tanks. So it's roughly in the middle. Now I just want to offset this for all the engines to be flush with the ground for stability on the on, on the launch pad. A little further down. That looks about right. I don't know why there's a unplaced fuel duct here. There we go. I prefer if those were you know, more like this. And now we're going to put um, caps on these boosters. And since we unlock struts, I'm also going to strut them. I don't want any specification for long stages like these. Don't worry about putting them, strutting them on the stage above. They're going to uh, separate whenever we decouple, so that should be fine. Uh, rockets are not staged properly here, I believe. We have, what, four here, one here, and the two thuds. Perfect. We have 1.25 thrust to weight ratio, which is perfect for the bottom stage. We're also going to strut this like it to be nice and level, good enough. And so if we see, yeah, going up, this should easily go like 10 kilometers or whatever. And at 10 kilometers with a full fuel tank on the middle stage, it's going to get us into orbit. Very good. Then we separate the side boosters. And then when we're ready, we can separate the ascent stage entirely, use these rockets, use this fuel tank to send us to the moon, land, and let's see, 2,382 units of Delta V for the top stage. Is that a little low? I don't think it is, considering I'm using the... Uh, I'm taking away from, you know, I calculated 3,000 units and 860 units were from the transfer and we have a transfer stage now so 3,000 minus 860 is below that so we should be plenty fine. So this is starting to look like our moon rocket so I'm going to name it and we are going to see each other tomorrow in the mission episode so if that helped you, if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and post comments and feedback in the section below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.